For more on the Fed's path ahead, let's bring in Roger Ferguson, the former vice chair of the Federal Reserve and a CNBC contributor. Roger, always great to get your take. Um, do you believe what the bond market is, is telegraphing seemingly so definitively? Uh, some yes and some no. So let me be clear about that. The bond market is clearly expecting um, the Fed to continue to raise rates for a period of time. I think that's correct. I think where the bond market is off is uh, in an inversion that is implying uh, a Fed going to, that's going to have to change its tune relatively quickly, i.e., before the end of this year. Um, a place where I think the bond market is probably right again is probably I'm in the camp of you know a softish uh, uh, landing. Um, but maybe, you know, a mild recession uh, risk increasing. So if the bar market is telling us the probability of recession has gone up significantly, I'd say, yes, they're right there. So I think the bond market is mainly right, but I think it's getting some of the timing maybe off just a little bit. Roger, the faster and or higher the Fed goes, do you think that that soft landing scenario becomes less probable? Uh, yes, I do. Um, and that is because, you know, it's very hard to judge exactly when you've gone far enough. Uh, I think they recognize that they've put a lot of restraint into the economy relatively quickly. And yet they are continuing to confront a labor market that is very tight, you know, roughly two jobs for every unemployed person. The incoming data have mainly been uh, showing greater resilience and strength. So I think they are in, a, in an interesting dilemma where they put a lot in and probably still have more to go. And whenever that happens, um, and whenever you move fast and look like you're going to continue to move fast, you don't have time to sort of judge. And the probability of maybe over tightening by one or two meetings, uh, I think, certainly has to go up. Roger, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. We've been talking about the pace and the impact of, of the Fed actions, and maybe you can comment on it in terms of how unprecedented this is, both layering into an economy that was effectively reopening after COVID, um, but the, the, the magnitude and the velocity of these rate height moves, and, and yet we haven't really seen it on top of a labor market that, as you just described, is, is structurally uh, strong and will remain strong. So we're all struggling with the pace of this. We all want this to go very fast. Um, your view on how long this could play out? So look, I think um, the Fed has got at least two more moves, and they are struggling at this stage, as Chair Powell said today, between 25 and 50 basis points. I think uh, what the Chair signaled, Chairman Powell signaled today, is a higher so-called terminal rate. The market is starting to get its head around the possibility of a number that starts with six. I think that's not impossible. Um, I think they are going to keep rates higher for longer than maybe the market is currently pricing in. Uh, the market is catching up to the fact that probably not a cut this year. Uh, so that's where we are. But it starts with uh, the inputs that are also quite unprecedented. You know, global sh shutting down and then opening after a pandemic, huge amounts of stimulus everywhere, uh, the uncertainty of the first war on continental Europe uh, since 1945. So many things that are unprecedented here, and not surprising that one of those things that's unprecedented is the pace at which the Fed has had to move. And also, frankly, at this stage in the cycle, the uncertainty that still remains. Um, the, the Fed officials who have spoken recently, including, of course, Chair Powell, have certainly gotten across the message to the markets that it will be higher. The longer part, you know, it's a little bit of a question mark here. You speak Fed, Roger. So when you hear longer, does that mean like six months to you? I mean, the, the, we're seeing cuts being priced in for June of next year. That doesn't seem like a very long time, but maybe, maybe in the world of, of Fed officials, that is a long time. What's your take on that? So look, I think the, the question the market is, is trying to come to grips with is, okay, is the Fed willing to uh, risk a recession in order to get inflation under control? I think the Fed is willing to do that. They've talked about so-called pain. They've talked about a bumpy landing, et cetera. I think the market is not 100 percent convinced that the Fed's going to allow us to even have a short and shallow recession in order to get inflation under control. I think the Fed is ready to do that. Having said that, you know, cuts mid part of next year, um, possible, depending on how the incoming data play in. So where I think, you know, where I was disagree with the market was an expectation of cuts this year. I thought that was really wrong. 
the possibility of a cut middle part of next year. Uh, the odds are it's possible, but it depends very much on, on the incoming data. I think where the equity markets have been wrong is they keep losing track of the big picture, which is that inflation is still very much about, above what the Fed wants. And they, the equity market keeps getting very optimistic about a turn. I think that's where they've been wrong. The bond market was wrong about a cut this year. I think they may be closer to right about the Fed holding rates high, at least to the middle part of next year. And that's a relatively long period of time. All right. Roger, great to get your take. Thank you. Roger Ferguson. All right. So the question is, how long will the equity markets be wrong for? <laughs> and what will convince the markets that, yeah, it could be a recession, it could be a short and shallow, but it will be a recession. We could see some sort of hard impact on the economy of all this. It's funny. So we talk about earnings a lot. We talk about multiples. We're willing to pay for earnings. And, you know, when we just look at the batch of earnings we just had, I think we, this has been a, a, a thing that we've seen over the last year where expectations come down in the earnings and these companies basically overperform and they don't. It's really been um, there's never been like a massive takedown of the out year guidance. Right. It's been like they guide down just a little bit, not as bad as expected. We rally out of it. If you look at what we just heard from some of these retailers and a lot of these retailers, and if you think about Walmart, and we were talking about it earlier today, I mean, that stock is breaking down right now. Target has been not so great. The Costco guidance wasn't particularly good. Maybe you want to talk to some of these retailers that have had to deal with these fits and starts with inventories, with a picky consumer, a consumer that's been trading down, a consumer that we know has been loaded up with credit right now, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. And so that's the thing that I think as we kind of get comfortable with higher rates for longer, um, those are like, going to be the early spots where we see some of the weakness, and maybe that's what some of that part of the stock market is telling us right now.